Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on hydro treating. As we know, hydro treating operation removes the objectionable materials such as sulfur, nitrogen, olefins as well as some of the aromatics from the feed. The operation does not crack the feed. So hydro cracking is different, hydro treating is different. At times, the hydro treating operation may follow the hydro cracking operation where you already cracked the material in presence of hydrogen. Naphtha or similar lighter materials are hydro treated prior to their reforming operations so that the feed which goes to the reforming is free from impurities. Heavier distillate ranging from jet fuel to vacuum gas oil are hydro treated to meet the straight and stringent quality specifications. The hydro treating may be used for upgrading the quality of heavy acids by removing sulfur and organometallic compounds. The common objectives of the hydro treating can be summarized as per treatment of the naphtha prior to reforming, kerosene diesel treatment to remove the sulfur, saturate the olefins and some aromatics to improve the viscosity index of the lube oils to improve the fluid catalytic cracking yields and to reduce the catalyst consumption and to upgrade the heavy atmospheric resids. What is the flow scheme? The flow scheme consists of feed which is heated to a desired temperature, reactor operating at high pressure and made up of number of small catalytic bed sections separated by cooling and redistribution. What does it mean? The reactor where the hydro treating process takes place, the reaction being exothermic increases the temperature. So, always the reactor will have a zone which is cooling and then again redistributing the material so that the process is not carried out at very high temperature. The separation of products and unreacted feed operating at much lower pressure at the outlet and Subsequent recycle and adding of makeup hydrogen forms the base of this particular process. This is shown schematically here. Fresh feed and hydrogen, they enter the reactor. From the reactor, whatever the products go out, they are fractionated so that separation can take place and products which are desired and unreacted hydrogen, they go for the recycle. What are the reactor effluents? The heat is recovered by heating the reactor feed. In this process, sometimes a small amount of water is sprayed into the effluent which helps to prevent the precipitation of salts from, from the H2S or from ammonia. Vapor and liquid are separated over a range of temperatures depending upon the composition. Fractionation or distillation. There are distillation columns and heat exchangers to remove off gases or products from the C3 or C4 streams. In addition, the naphtha and diesel are separated also by fractionation. The fractionation is frequently practiced in stages. Chemistry of the process. What is the chemistry of this hydro treating? The main reactions which are important are removal of sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen and some metallic components. Saturation of olefins, saturation of aromatics and removal of halides, mainly the chlorides. Because these are the impurities. Sulfur forms H2S. Nitrogen forms ammonia, oxygen forms water and metallic components form some other halides and the chlorides may be removed because there may be occasionally some chlorides available. The concentration of the sulfur or organometallic compounds vary depending upon the feed. The atmospheric acids have more metallic components than naphtha. Some crudes contain more of sulfur or nitrogen as compared to others. So accordingly, one has to change the conditions of this particular reactor. Therefore, the hydrogen consumption and removal of heat of reaction also depends upon amount of sulfur, nitrogen, olefins or the aromatics present in the feed. The hydro desulfurization and saturation of olefins are fast reactions. What it means? They take less time and they produce more heat. The saturation of olefins liberates more heat. So between these two reactions, the saturation of hydrogen always is producing more heat. 
saturation of aromatics and removal of nitrogen are more difficult reactions as compared to removal of sulfur. Let us look at all these reactions one by one. First, sulfur removal. The sulfur is removed as H2S, hydrogen sulfide gas. Some of the reactions which are commonly observed are shown next. What we can see is that mercaptans, they react with hydrogen and they give you RH and H2S. So, sulfides or disulfides, they will be consuming different amounts of hydrogen. So, what it means is that one mole of mercaptan requires one mole of hydrogen. One mole of sulfide requires two moles of hydrogen. One mole of disulfides requires three moles of hydrogen. If you are having thiophene, it requires four moles of hydrogen. What it means, depending upon the chemistry, the amount of hydrogen required can be calculated and that much hydrogen has to be supplied. Olefin saturation. Olefins have unsaturation. A common example which I have shown here is H2C double bond CH, CH double bond CH2. This is the butadiene. When you add hydrogen to that, it forms a normal butane. So the sulfur removal reactions can be arranged from easier to harder. So mercaptans, sulfides, disulfides, thiophenes, benzothiophenes and dibenzothiophenes. Mercaptans are easy to react while as dibenzothiophenes are difficult to react. Therefore, formation of hydrogen sulfide is more easy when mercaptans are present as compared to dibenzothiophenes. In naphtha, most sulfur is present as mercaptans and sulfides. Therefore, it is fairly easy to remove them. In gas oils, it is present as benzothiophenes and dibenzothiophenes and therefore, it will take more time or conditions will be different. Nitrogen removal. The aromatics, amines, pyrrol, pyridine and quinoline are some of the major nitro compounds which are present either in the feed or they are generated in the process. So they need to be removed. The nitrogen is removed as ammonia. The aromatic compounds are saturated and the ring opens to form the amines and the nitrogen is removed as ammonia. Some of the reactions are shown over here. As you can see, let us look at now olefin saturation. Olefins are found in petroleum products at various stages and in different proportions. The reactions are very rapid and highly exothermic. Olefins are produced while cracking operations are taking place. So, olefins are generated in number of refining operations. So, those olefins have to be saturated and therefore hydrotreating is the process. Metal removal. Most metallic impurities are found in naphthas and middle distillates in ppm level. Mercury is found in some condensates. Arsenic is present in some crudes while silicone may come from additives such as anti-foaming agents or other materials which are used in whiz breaking and cokers. So metallic compounds may be present in the feed, may get come in because of additives and or they may come from some other impurities. Gas oil streams and the atmospheric residues contain nickel and vanadium. Those may be coming from the catalyst which are used in those processes. So metallic salts may be present because they are used as catalyst. All the metal impurities react with H2S and they form the metal halides. So as we can see here, RME plus H2S gives you RH2 which is a saturated compound and metal sulfide. These sulfides are dangerous. They get deposited onto the catalyst surface and deactivated permanently. Therefore, removal of metal is most important. It is not for the recovery of metal. It is for removal of this metal so that they do not form the sulfides and get deposited onto the catalyst. A special catalyst may be used for the demetallization and it is also carried out prior to desulfurization. Halide removal. Halides like chlorides or bromides are present in the petroleum fraction in trace amounts. During hydro treating, it forms either the hydrochloric acid or hydrobromic acid or corresponding chlorinated compound. So, this removal of chlorine is essential because that otherwise can also become very corrosive. Cobalt molybdenum system is usually designed for desulfurization. These consume less hydrogen for given amount of sulfur removal as they have low hydrogen activity. These are also less sensitive to variation of hydrogen pressure. 
These are therefore recommended when hydrogen supply may be in short supply. The nitrogen removal is less when this catalyst is employed, nickel molybdenum system. This catalyst perform well for nitrogen removal, hydrogenation and also for desulfurization. They are effective in metal removal to some extent. These may be used as top layer where olefin saturation can take place. Catalyst performance. The performance is measured in three ways. Initial activity. It is measured in terms of minimum temperature at which the desired products are formed at the beginning of the operation. As the operation progresses, the activity of catalyst goes down and therefore you have to increase the temperature. Stability is the rate at which the temperature of catalyst has to be increased to maintain the desired product production. Product quality is measured in terms of the catalyst stability to produce the products of desired specifications. Preparation of catalyst becomes the most important issue. The base support of catalyst is gamma alumina. This can be prepared from any of the alpha alumina trihydrate or beta alumina trihydrate or alpha alumina monohydrate. The catalyst can be prepared by impregnation, co-milling or by hot soaking. Important process variables. Reactor temperature, the weight average bed temperature as discussed earlier is used to describe the reactor temperature. The temperature is connected to the catalyst activity and the extent of reaction in a given zone. The effluents from the first zone are quenched and cooled before they enter the next zone. They are also redistributed for better contact over the catalyst surface. Feed quality and rate. Feed quality depends upon the source and the conditions maintained prior to hydro treating. So where the feed for hydro treating is coming from? Is it naphtha? Is it coming from whiz breaking? Is it coming from resid? Accordingly, its quality will change. Feed rate is adjusted with a range of LHSV per hour. The hydrogen partial pressure is very important. The higher hydrogen pressure always yields higher octane number for the diesel. It also reduces the amount of aromatics in the final product. Recycle gas purity. The recycle gas purity is very important as it mixed with the fresh gas. The purity of fresh hydrogen depends upon its source like whether it has come from reformer unit or hydrogen generation unit. Therefore, the recycle gas quality has to be properly adjusted. Average purity should not be less than 80%. The hydrogen consumption reduces its partial pressure. The consumption of hydrogen is through the chemical reactions mentioned earlier and also accompanying losses like veins and other places. Catalyst quality. The hydro treating catalyst may tolerate certain metal contaminants. Quality of regenerated catalyst can be accordingly adjusted. 